Welcome back to John's Films. Today is the day we're going to build the computer for the movie director that we spec'd out last week. It's going to be a build with me, so I'll show you step by step how to build the computer. If you already know how to build a computer, stick around. Maybe it'll go full verge. Let's get to it. First thing we need is to get our toolkit and all of our parts assembled in a common space. We need a work surface. This one is probably just on the edge of too small, but it fits in frame. Pick your favorite screwdriver set and let's get ready. The astute among you will notice that I have two processors sitting here. That's because Amazon shipped this one first, which came without the processor in it. But Amazon fixed it same day and the next day we had this one. This is going to be your Ryzen 3900X. It's a 12 core processor, it comes 24 threads, and it'll go on this MSI Meg X570 motherboard. So we'll get started with that. That's the power supply, don't need that. Graphics card, don't need that. We've got our storage, our RAM, and we're ready to go. You will be using pretty much only one screwdriver this entire time, and it's going to be a Phillips head. So I will pick my favorite computer building Phillips head bit there and I am ready to go. All right first thing you're going to do pull out your motherboard. Now the motherboard is shipped in this electrostatic bag and that's so that it doesn't get popped and you wonder well why do they do that? Well you need to be aware if you build up a lot of static electricity in your skin in your body and you were to touch some of the components of the motherboard, the processor, the memory, the storage, you would run into some problems. It would fry the box. In fact, the buildup, the static discharge that comes off of you could hurt those components. And so what we want to do is be careful not to touch anything metal. Well, John, that's easier said than done. Yeah, I agree. And so truly what the answer is, is be careful, be smart. When you're handling things like this motherboard outside the bag, that is, um, make sure to try and only touch the sides. It's pretty easy rule to follow. And I've got unpainted steel right here below me. I'm going to touch that before I start touching or handling any of these components. That will help ensure that you get grounded and discharge anything that you got. Now, you'll need a clean work surface. You can often work on top of the cardboard box. I'm just going to work on my mat here. And with our motherboard, I'm going to give you a quick overview. This is the AM4 socket. This has been in use since the original Ryzen drop from AMD and it's still in use here in the X570 chipset and the Ryzen 3900 that we're going to use. Here on the motherboard we've got three M.2 slots. Take these plates off you can snap in a hard drive. This is the memory bank so this is where you would store your memory so your RAM that's these things are going to snap in here and the first thing that we want to do is get our CPU socketed in here carefully and safely so that we don't damage it through the rest of the process. Unboxing the CPU. It's a big box and that's because it has a cooler in it and we're going to be using that cooler to cool the computer. Why? Well, because it's adequate, gets the job done, and it's already paid for. We wouldn't want to have to spend what is about another $80 to $100 out of the budget to cool something that we can cool adequately here. We're not going to be overclocking this machine. It is a production workstation and we don't want to mess with any of that. We want reliability. So here is our cooler. You can see it's actually quite beefy. It has uh, four heat pipes attached to a copper block. Those four heat pipes are actually hollow inside, which is interesting. As you can see, it's got thermal paste already applied, so we do not need to worry about that. That is plenty. Do not add your own. Um, if you decide you want to go with a different thermal paste, clean that off first. So to get the processor ready, I've now got the case and I'm going to pop it open. On the back of the processor, you're going to notice a ton of tiny little pins. These are very important. You do not want to bend them. Also on the back of the processor, you're going to notice that one of the corners has a gold triangle on it. That one right there on the bottom right. That needs to line up to a tiny tr triangle in the top right corner of the socket. You can see it up there on the right. So to get this going, what we want to do is pull the latch up, pull this latch up. I want to make sure I've got this gold corner 
up in the top right there, aligned with the socket up at the top. So I will rotate the CPU, take the corner, put it down, and gently drop it. Now I've put it here on top of the socket, and I'm going to wiggle it until it gently drops and is seated, and I cannot wiggle it side to side or front to front. I want to make sure that that's competently put in, and then I will take the bar and lower it, securing the processor into the socket. Congrats, we've now put the CPU in. We would put the cooler in, but since there's thermal paste on it already, and it's going to be easy to get in, I'm gonna wait until I get this thing into the case, because it might be a bit easier for me to get it going. It could be a good idea for me to do a test boot here outside of the case, but I don't feel like rigging up the power supply and everything just to make sure that it's gonna boot up. I've got every confidence that these things shipped fully functional. Famous last words. You do need to make sure you save these cables out of the CPU packaging. Those attach for the fan and the RGB to ensure that it looks as good as you want. The next thing I'll do is put the RAM in. Now the memory, the reason I'm putting it in now, I may have some clearance issues with the CPU cooler and I want to be able to test fit that to make sure that I'm not going to run into any issues. I did pre-measure this in the specs and it should work just fine, but you never know. So popping the RAM open, we got two sticks of 16 gigabyte DDR4 3600 megahertz RAM. This stuff is going to be flying. To get this into the motherboard, you can see in the sockets, there's a small bump in the middle of the dim slot. And that small bump will align with this notch that's cut into the memory. Now in this case, I've got two sticks of memory and four slots. Believe it or not, it matters which ones you put in here. This is dual channel memory, which means that there are two dedicated lanes going from the memory into the processor for the processor to access. The two lanes are assigned one to two of them and another one to the other two. If we put the memory into two that share a lane, we would not be getting the optimal throughput from our memory to our CPU. Typically, you can take a look at the motherboard and see labelings here that will indicate where to put the memory. In this case, it is not here, and so I'm going to look inside the motherboard documentation to see what they suggest. Sure enough, here we are in the English version. Note, this is a very thick guide. Don't get intimidated. There's like 12 languages in here. And you can see in the middle, the memory, you want it in the second and fourth slot. So I'm going to now do that so that we can meet their recommendation. And to get that working, I'm going to open up the second and fourth slots memory retention clips. And now making sure that the notch matches where the bump is in the As I push down on this memory, look at this on each side, the memory retention clip, and you'll see it. As I push this down, those two memory clips retain themselves. And now the memory cannot come back out of the board. Here we are, I'll show you again. I will socket this into the appropriate slot. In this motherboard, it is uh, two and four. And as I clip this down, you're going to see the two retention pins on the side. Pop in. You need to make sure that these are perfectly in a line, and that indicates that your memory is properly seated. If it is not properly seated, the computer won't boot. You'll get some beeps or light signals off the motherboard, and you will be in troubleshooting mode. Now that we have our motherboard assembled with the processor and the memory, we need to make sure we consider what our storage looks like. Today we're using one M.2 interface drive and two SATA interface drives. This one we will plug into the motherboard here under the primary M.2 heatsink. I have three here with me. The expense of going with three NVMe drives didn't make sense given that they have very little benefit outside of an OS drive for DaVinci Resolve. I'm sure there's those of you that will argue with me, but my benchmarks show me there actually isn't um, a huge benefit because you're paying for speed that outstrips your processor and graphics card's ability to ingest the data that's on them when they're doing complex calculations. Now, if you're copying from drive to drive, sure, it would be faster. Now, what's awesome about these NVMe drives, one, they're pretty darn small, uh, two, they are faster than these SSDs. This one will read up to about 3,000 megabits a second, whereas these go about 500, 600. 
and you don't have to put any external cables in. So what you can see is I'm unscrewing with the Phillips head screwdriver the top of this and the back. So now that I've unscrewed the top of the M.2 slot, I pull the heatsink off, flip this thing over, you will find that there is a plastic wrapped heat or thermal pad. This is to pull heat off of the M.2 drive. These M.2 drives can get hot when they access things as fast as they do. As you have this happening, you're going to want to make sure that you align the notch in that M.2 drive with the notch that's in the socket for it. And gently, just feed it in like you're feeding a stick of gum into an ATM and align it to where it is aligned with where the screw hole goes for the M.2 heatsink. Now that we've got that seated where it belongs, we're going to lift up gently just a scotch and pop it in until you get a click. You'll know it's in when you can let it go and it flops up like this. <laughs> that's uh, that's the universal M.2 sign for I'm in. So now we're going to be able to take our heatsink and put it on top though there are some screws provided that we're going to use to make sure that we hold this down appropriately. Let me grab one of those. These are about the only screws that do come with your motherboard. They come often in a little bag just like this and they are tiny. So be on the lookout for it. You're going to use it to hold down your M.2 drive. There we go. Retaining the M.2 drive properly. Now remember this. This is the sticky side with the heatsink. I'm going to take this and you can typically, just with this edge, line it up through this side in, screw the other side of the heat sink down, make sure it's in there nice and snug, but don't over tighten it, and we're good. So now we have our CPU, our RAM, and our storage in place, and we need to start thinking about how we're going to mount this in the case. For that, I'm going to reset up some lighting so that you can actually see what I'm doing in there. Let's get to that. All right, now I've got the case out of the box. Be careful with that. And note that there are a ton of screws that are included with your case, and that's what you're going to use to assemble the rest of your computer. But you need to be careful because in some cases, there are secret tricks to get into these things. And if you were to force it, you will break a clip or retention snap, something that could happen pretty easily, actually. So don't force anything. If you need some help, take a look in the manual that comes with the computer case. In this case, it came up under the top up here. And I'm gonna do that because it's not my computer and I don't know if I have built in this exact case before. I built in the Land Cool 1, which I really enjoyed. The Land Cool, cool, uh, the Land cool 2 here has a USB-C type port on the top, but uh, buyer beware, one of the users commented to me on this and figured it out before the case arrived. It does not actually have a cable that goes from the motherboard up to the hole that they've provided. And in doing so, they frustrated me because now I'm going to have to 3D print a bracket that gets attached to it. No big deal, but um, not something you really want to do all the time. So, step one, remove front panel. Good, that's where I was headed. Looks like we just popped that off the front. Pretty sizable and heavy metal front panel. That's pretty cool. Um, I see you get... Yeah, two K, two fans and three fans include. You get three fans included. I'm going to be adding some of my own Intermax fans I've got from my uh, LickTech two days, where I went through two or three of those with Lick, with uh, Intermax because they could not build a quality product for the TR4 chipset. Now this I know swings open and lifts up. I've just got to figure out where the retention mechanism is. There we go, and then lifts up to come off. That's a clever design as well. This is tempered glass. If you were to drop it, it would shatter. Not into a thousand pieces tempered, but it still would break and that wouldn't be real cool. I'm gonna need both sides off and pull the other side off. Great magnets on that, on that retention. There you go. And um, I'm also leaving the plastic on here so we don't get these things scraped up before we wanna use them. There you go. All right. Uh, oh man, this is fantastic. So we've got some cable retention mechanisms back here on this side. I do like this. This is a pretty nice case for the price. I think $109, somewhere around in there. Um, quite a deal, actually. Thumb screws are in here nice and tight. I'll be using the screwdriver for that. 
And first order of business is always going to be, let's find where they've stashed all the screws and whatnot. Um, typically they're down in the battery bay, I mean the battery, <laughs> typically they're down in the power supply shroud that folds open in one of the hard drive cages. So let's see if that's true today. It appears it is. Now I need to figure out what the retention, wow, that's nice, what the retention mechanism is in this case. Here's our hard drive bays. They have, okay, clever, some pull. And there we go, the magic box. So be on the lookout for that. This should have our motherboard standoffs. That's what we use to mount. Ooh, the standoffs are already mounted, sweet. So now what we're looking for is just screws that are gonna hold the motherboard down as we get, get going. Sure enough, screws. I've got some zip ties in here or uh, tweezers if you're The Verge. If you don't know what I'm talking about, a couple years ago, The Verge, a media distribution outlet, put out a how to build a computer <laughs> um, video, but they clearly didn't know what they were doing, nor did they realize that these are not called tweezers. No idea. So uh, if you really want to see something bitwit, Kyle has a pretty funny parody of it. Okay, so next order of business is going to be to get this on its side so that I can seat the motherboard in there and get the CPU cooling on it safely. To do that, I'm gonna put these hard drive bays back in for the moment. Pretty slick little quick release mechanism to get it going. I can fold that back up, fold that up, and here we go. All right. Forgive any uh, camera shake here, but we're using this so that we can see exactly what I'm doing inside. Again, I don't want to touch all of the electrical or metallic components on the motherboard. I'm going to pick it up by its corners. And I want to make sure that one, if you're building with some other motherboard, that the IO plate, IO shield back here is already installed or that you've clipped one in. You can also check your motherboard box to see if you're going to need that. In this case, I have, it appears to be everything I need installed. That I.O. shield is going to be socketed into your case in the back back there. Right now I'm moving a couple of fan cables and I'm going to pull this through, taking special care not to bend or mutilate any special components here. There we go. Because the standoffs are already on here, should be able to align a couple more fan cables and a USB 3 cable that was messing me up there. And there we go. When it lies flat and you're seeing each of the standoffs under the holes in the motherboard, you know you've got it right. Seated in there. Now I'm grabbing the screws that came with the case and I'm going to put the flatter, wider ones uh, through the holes in the motherboard. They always make it easy. They put every type of screw possible into this bag and let you play pick and choose. See if you're going to get the, que the answer right. In this case, what we're looking for is something that looks a bit like this. You can see it's got a flat top on the side. It's deep enough and the threads are actually going to go straight through the motherboard without threading anything in the motherboard and then stick into the standoffs below. These are the holes in the motherboard. All of them have this uh, soldering ring around them that you'll then grind into. And when I say grind, I mean gently caress. You do not want to push or force any extra force on the motherboard than you have to. You will need your screwdriver though, which is what I'm trying to find. Screwdriver, where did you go? Got a flashlight, woohoo! Screwdriver. Screwdriver. Oh, where did you go, screwdriver? Aha! Maybe we should amend the build list of tools to include a flashlight to find things when you drop them on the ground. All right, so here we are. I've got my screw just stuck in behind back there. Note, I love these screwdrivers. This is the iFixit kit. They're magnetic. This, this particular set has been working for me for a couple of years now. Magically, I have not lost any of the bits yet. And um, they've solved pretty much every need I've had when it comes to screwing something in. Can't ask much more from a screwdriver. Get some more of these motherboard standoff screws. Get them in.
For those of you that play video games, you're familiar with completionists. Those are the folks that go through and do every single bit. Um, like if you were going to try and get every coin that's in Super Mario Brothers, or um, kill every orc in Zelda Breath of the Wild, then this would be your jam. It is a good idea to go ahead and plug and screw in every single motherboard standoff. And does it really matter? Can you do three of them? Sure. I'm sure that would work just fine. The deal there, though, <laughs> you don't want to put any undo torque on the motherboard. And so you really don't want to have any hot spots in the way that it's being held up there. Really, it's six or seven screws. So just be patient and do it. At some point later down the road, you're going to be flexing against the board. You're going to be angry at it. You're going to be trying to get the stupid USB 3 cable plugged in or something. And uh, you don't want to have a board that's not fully anchored because you don't want it to snap. Now, here's a good example where I'm with the USB 3 cable hanging out. It's going to go right into the side of the board. Just a couple of fan headers. Make sure at this point you no longer have any more of this plastic like this on your motherboard. They will put this plastic on the heat sinks. This one doesn't have one to keep them from getting scratched during shipping and or manufacturing. But make sure it's off because we're going to start putting some stuff in here that will make it very difficult for us to get back at it later. And as we know, we've got our processor, our RAM, and now we're able to, with our storage, get everything going together. I'm now going to apply the heat sink. This heat sink comes with some thermal compound on the bottom. This is plenty good, does its job. Again, we're not overclocking, we're not looking for world records, we're looking for consistent, solid performance. And I like the even spread on this. When you put your own on there, sure, it spreads out pretty well, but this hits every corner of the chip, makes me happy. And I don't have to glob a bunch on there with the hopes that it gets it all. Nor do you want to glob a whole bunch on there. Unlike the Verge, and about half a tube on there. That's, um, yeah, great. Now there's two retention clips that are on the sides, either side here, and you just want to make sure that those get clipped in there. Um, you can open up so that it gets a little bit more, and then you'll close it back down so that you can get it clamped. So these stock coolers have this kind of janky open up and then clip back down mechanism. So that's the clip down mode. This is the opened up mode. And it extends it so that we can get it around the hooks that are already pre-installed on the motherboard. That's another beautiful thing about using the stock cooling mechanism. The board's already set up for it. Some of the other cooling mechanisms, if you get a fancy tower, you may have to take the back plate off the back and re-socket it with some different mounting hardware. There you go. Now that I have the opposite side connected, I'm going to extend this in there. I've got plenty of clearance for the RAM and make sure that I get this side down and around it. There we go. And then close the clamp. That will provide the appropriate amount of tension to now socket this in there and make sure that there's a good seal. This is imperative because if this is not sealed well in there or if you've got way too much thermal paste, the heat won't transfer off the processor well enough and the processor won't be able to boost its core thread clocks as high as it's supposed to. Now that we've got this on, we should talk about all these cables hanging off here. These cables plug into the fan headers on the motherboard. The fan headers on the motherboard have four pins and have a little uh, retention latch next to them. On your motherboard, though, there's a very specific one that is labeled for a fan pump or for a fan header that is for the CPU only. The motherboard will monitor this and in the BIOS and in manufacturer provided software, regulate the speed of the fan relative to the temperature of the processor. So you gotta make sure you plug this into the one that says CPU. In this case, it's right up here on the top and I will clip that in. All the fan headers do work the same, so you could make the mistake of trying to plug the CPU fan into one of the system fan slot slots. It's not the end of the world, it will still run, um, but you may run into a spot where your computer's getting really, really hot because the fan's not spinning fast enough, and it's not spinning fast enough because it really doesn't think it's got a CPU attached to it. If you don't connect something to your CPU fan header at all, there's a good chance your BIOS is gonna tell you that you don't have a fan and will refuse to boot without making you 
process an alert. So I've got that plugged in now at the top. Uh, the rest of these, what I've got, this is another fan. You notice, let's pull this one out. You'll notice this one only has three plugs, and that's fine. Um, there's two different types of fans. This one with the three plugs is, is perfectly adequate. It is going to plug into the same four pin header. Uh, you'll center it over the retention clip. You'll be able to see which one it attaches to. So don't freak out on that. One thing you should freak out about is if you've got any RGB included with your computer, there are two different competing RGB protocols. One is addressable RGB, the other is just generic RGB. Um, the reason you want to care is one of them runs 5 volts, one of them runs 12 volts, and you need to make sure you're plugging the right RGB in to your motherboard before you do it so you don't fry any of your components. Now I'm going to plug in some of the I.O. We have a bunch of connectors that go to the front of the case. This one is the USB 3 connector. Now this can be a little touchy. You're going to be getting this USB 3. This runs to the USB 3 plugs on the front of the motherboard. If it's not going in, like right here, it seems like it's not quite getting in there for me. Ah, oh, there we go. Wiggle gently and then um, back it out and take a look. Want to make sure you don't have any pins obstructing your way in. If you do, it's not going to function properly and you're probably going to hurt the socket. So there we go. That is in. You can see I've got the bump coming through the top of the socket. That lets you know you're properly aligned. I mentioned the addressable RGB. Here's the, one of the two RGB standards. We'll deal with those in a little bit, though we have not blinged out this case by any means. But while we're at it, we might as well connect the rest of the front panel I.O. In this case, it is running out the back and then coming back in the side. Um, I want to do this before I get too far along because once you get a lot of stuff in there, it can be hard to get these connected to the motherboard. So, to that end, I'm now going to stand up the case on its side, proving I actually did screw in what I'm supposed to. And then let's see if these are still magnetic themselves. Nope, these have these. All right. And back here, you're now seeing all of the cables that are set up from the front of the case. This fat one is actually the USB 3 we just plugged in. This is going to be power that's going to run forward and to the RGB element on the front of the case. It's nice that they put these cable ties in here. Again, for the price, this case is fantastic. Typically, these routing mechanisms and some of the shielding, this is all stuff that you get in more expensive cases. Uh, let's see. So, again, power of the RGB. This one is the audio editor. So, you see audio. That'll go into your motherboard. Um, this is more RGB connector. Let's see what else we got. I'm going to throw the RGB components over the top here just to separate them out, see what else we got. Okay, these, oh boy. These are the front panel connectors that make the buttons all map and work. These are a pain. Get ready to get patient with those. The things that I'm going to need on the front, I'm going to feed through. This is now excess. You can see it's plugged into my USB 3 header there. I'm just going to pin it up here for a second. I'll probably tie it off later so that it's out of the way in case the director needs to come back into his case for some reason. These, This connector specifically runs down to the interface for the RGB header, and this is the pins that are going to plug into an extension from the motherboard to allow you to control that from the front. All right, so the only two I need to feed through are the audio and the front panel connectors at this point. I'm going to funnel those through the same gap. I can go under here. There's a there's a hole that comes up from the bottom. You know what? In fact, I'm going to do that because what you really want from all the cables that are in the back, you just want them to pop out right next to where they need to plug in, and all of the cabling stays back here. Only the plug-in part goes up in the front, and you can see it, and that'll be minimal. So I'm going to pull those through, and I'll turn it around so you can see it in just a second. And there we go. So you can see now I've got the two cables that I passed through. I did that because the headers are typically down here on the bottom. Looks like I might have my front panel over here. We may reroute that in a second. All right, we're going to start with our front panel HD audio connector. And this is so that your front panel headphone jacks work, etc. It is quite typically down here because often the portion of the motherboard over here 
with the capacitors, you can see up there, often this is where the sound card is. This is the capacitors for the sound card. Notice I didn't touch them, just got near them. And we want to make sure we line up the blank hole. You can see there in the audio connector with the blank hole in the header on the motherboard. Gently place this around and near where you think it goes and wiggle it till you feel it easily on there and then you can just slide it on with your finger. There we go. So now we've got our audio connected. Notice it comes up right where we want it to. On this, however, we're looking for the, and you'll see that's USB, USB, fan header, fan header, RGB. When in doubt, find the major picture here in your motherboard and it will show you exactly which one goes where. So what we'll do is keep that open on the desk, pull the front panel connectors through, and now I'm going to map very specifically, based on the labels that are on here, to the map that they gave me. Really what I like to do is arrange it in my hand so that they're at least generally aligned where they need to be. So I've got a power switch, a reset switch, those two go on the top. And these singles are a serious pain in the butt. So when you're aware of that, you know going in, this one does not have the hard drive LED attached to it. It's one of these plus and minus, of course it is. So now we gotta get that right too. So I know that that goes there. And that is a constant struggle when they're bound together like this. So let's try this. There we go. And now I know the reset switch goes on the right, the hard, the power switch goes on the left. Do not mess that up or else you're gonna be pushing buttons um, trying to remember to power it up or to reset it, you'll be hitting the power hard. Okay, there we go. Because this is so close to this, it, would, it could go back and around. We'll do that. Now we don't have that cable showing quite as much and that's kind of nice. Okay, next thing I want to connect is my USB-C cable. This case comes with a Type-C connection hole on the top of it. It does not come with the cable that connects to the hole that puts it under the motherboard. So I ordered the cable separately, but the cable that they have available is only available on eBay for like 40 bucks. And it, on a $110 case, that seems stupid. Also, it ships from who knows where because it takes like a month to get here. Nobody got that kind of time. So I'm going to modify what's here just a scotch. I note on this, I'm taking these screws out. I will be putting all of them back in. And the reason isn't because I really enjoy this sideways dealing here. It's because this is where you push things in to plug in, and I don't want that to be wiggly. To show you what I'm doing, I am going to trim just the edges off of this, without trimming the cable, of course. Trim just that bit of rubber right there. I need this thing to seat just a little closer. test fittings here just to make sure these still work. They're a little off. There we go. These are great. Um, there's just a little separation between the type A ports and the holes, but they work great. Plugs in, no problem. All right, now what we're doing is making sure we've got our power supply through here. This is going to be one of the last few major components we put in, graphics card being the last one. And to get that out of the box, i got to find the box. Here we are in the power supply box. You're going to find your power supply manual. Big block, boom. The actual power supply. So here we have what's called a modular power supply, meaning none of these are plugged in, and I can choose by module which one I want to plug in. Semi-modular would have these 24 pins and potentially others already connected. It saves a little bit of manufacturing. You don't have to pay for the extra cables and connectors. However, 
for us, it's nice to have the one that has modular cables because we only have to turn in the ones that we want to turn in. Notice what I'm doing. I do not have the power supply in there yet. What I have is uh, just the connectors here. And I'm going to plug these into the motherboard while I've got space in the case for it and can look at where I want to route the cables to get them plugged in. The one you want here is the 24 pin large power connector. I'm going to route that back, fold it around, clip it into the board gently. You don't want to flex the motherboard too much, and you could right here. And then I'm working the cable back in so that it is sticking out as little as possible. Again, these aren't the most beautiful cables, so let's try not to look at them. Um, I'm now going to route. What we want to do is check to see how the power supply is going to insert. Obviously, it's not going in that way. It's going to come in from the side and get screwed in. And because of that, I'm going to route the cables that we've got coming through, and I'm going to go ahead and plug them into the power supply. There we go. So now we've got that connected. We're going to be connecting the additional 8 pin right here that goes up into the motherboard. We're not overclocking or anything crazy, so we don't need to worry about going overboard with it, but we do need to get that 8 pin into the board on the top. The cables are labeled on the side of the socket, it says PCIe, or on the side of the plug, PCIe. So these would be for like graphics cards. Right here it says CPU. And since this one says CPU on the side, I know that this is going to be the one that I want to put into the motherboard and then route back down to the power supply. That typically gets done through the top connector here. So I will disconnect this cable management plate. I'm going to be putting these back in when I get done here. All right. I'm going to grab the side that says CPU, not the side that is blank. And I want to plug that into up here through the top I'll tell you these make pretty good work lights <laughs> all right got that plugged in and now as we guessed I'm going to plug this back in over here okay, the last power that we're going to route is a connector for our graphics card and you're going to need to know what power is required by your graphics card so either know that or get ready and open it so this graphics card in particular is an RTX 2060 Super. One with the Super, it has 8 gigabytes of VRM versus the 2060. However, um, obviously it's not going to be as fast as the higher end, but it's a lot cheaper. And right now this is the Turing cards. This is the 2060. The Ampere cards should be announced August 31st in an NVIDIA press conference they recently called. Note it does get some power through the PCIe slot, but um, not enough to run more modern graphics cards. So this one I'm plugging into the back here, and I'm going to use the pass-through on the bottom to pull it up. I noticed that the connector in this card happens to be more towards the middle over here, and so I'm going to run it that way. As I'm getting ready to put the power supply in, I've plugged in all of my cables. I have a 24-pin, which runs up through the top here. That's the wide one. I then have a PCIe cable that I've run through specifically so I can use it with my graphics card. I've got a CPU cable which runs up here and provides even more power to the chipset. And then I've got a SATA cable which I'm going to use for the SSDs that sit in the back back here. Now I'm going to mount this. You can see this is a fan in here with big vents. There's big vents on the bottom of the case to accept that. And I'm going to use that going through. The, the screws that we're going to want to use are the four that have this kind of riveted top to them, kind of a flange on it. These are still Phillips head screws. Again, uh, you could build a whole computer with just a single screwdriver. It's pretty awesome. It's a good idea to always invest in nice hard drives, not the cheap things, because your hard drives hold your data. Your data is the important thing, right? Yeah. One and two. So now our hard drives are plugged in. Now we're going to do a cable check. We're going to make sure everything's still plugged in. We had a problem a second ago with the HD audio. We want to make sure everything else is still good. Once I get that done, I'll make sure the fans are all plugged in. We're going to test it out with just the three fans that came with. I'll throw some more fans in there if we need them. 
The fans get plugged in uh, to the fan headers, and really it doesn't matter which one you plug into as long as it's not the CPU or water pump fan uh, header on the motherboard. So you're looking for any of those four pin connectors, and they can be scattered all over the board, believe it or not. Uh, sometimes they're right here, sometimes they're around the bottom. In this case, I'm gonna run the cables back, at least this cable is coming back out the back, and then it'll come back forward where there's a fan header so I don't have cables going across the case. I tend to save the motherboard box and then put all these spare parts in that. It's typically a decent size, fits everything that needs to go in there, um, without taking up too much space. Uh, the power supply also comes with a pouch for your cables. That can be a good thing to keep as well. Okay, so now we're ready to install the graphics card. Place that over here, still in its electrostatic bag. We'll pull that out, taking care not to touch anything. This one has a back plate, which is helpful. Um, and there's a film here that you have to be careful of, so I need to remove the film. There is also, check this out, a protective rubber coating, a uh, rubber grommet type thingy, I don't know what you call that. Um, and so you've got to make sure that it's off as well. And here we go. They do this so again, it doesn't get scratched in packaging or something, and then they can't sell the graphics card without taking it all apart and scratch a dent or something. I don't know. All right. Now this is going to fit into our top socket right there. Screwdriver, where did you go? You need to look at the front of your card and identify how many sockets it's going to, slots it's going to take. These are just blanks that come right out. Right here, this is the PCIe slot. It has a retention clip on the far end that's going to hook and hang on to this little knob. So we line those up. First, line up the slots in the back. Make sure the retention clip is open and then push until it's flush and the retention clip will pop back up like the memory. I'm gonna click it in just to make sure it's seated. And now the graphics card power that we thoughtfully put through earlier, we're gonna take the four, uh, six plus two and clip it into place. So now we've assembled the majority of the computer, still got a couple fans to plug in and I'll do that and get us ready for our first test boot. All right, so I just did a test boot. Um, Scout's honor, it actually worked. It was amazing. And I'm in the BIOS, so my next thing is going to be configuration of the BIOS, then configuration of Windows install, and finally, download and install DaVinci Resolve. If you would like to see how all that works, it'll be in the next video. Hit subscribe to make sure you catch it, as well as laptop benchmarking coming up for a Dell laptop I found a steal on. If this has been really helpful to you, feel free to buy me a coffee. Link below. Thank you for watching. Affiliate links are below. Have a great day.